Hello, welcome to CM Video. My name is Dr. Michael Okreke. Do you know that you can actually write a Python script without having to actually write a Python script? I know that sounds very funny, but you can actually create a Python script using Abaku CAE. This is what I want to talk about in this video. So let's sit back and relax as we get into this video. Okay, as we get started with this modeling, this video is part of my Abacus tips and tricks series where I try to show you some really cool tricks about within Abacus of how you can do things, you know, that you're not necessarily used to. I've got to say that you would also need to know a thing or two about reading Python scripts to be able to use what we are talking about in this video. Okay, here we are in Abacus and what I'm going to first do is we're going to change the current working directory. So if we set go to here file set working directory and i like to paste my new working directory so it's going to be on c so this is a location somewhere in your computer so i'm going to use this so c drive and working directory so i'll leave that and next thing we're going to do is that we have to create a macro so if you start with the macro in abacus so far macro you create this so let's call this you know my my steel python script something like that so let's say this is the name you want to give to, to it. And I want you to save it on the working directory because remember we changed working directory. So you need to save it there and then you click continue. All right, so now the script is being created. So we've saved the macro to do that. So let's just build a really simple model. So if I call this a steel plate, I'm going to make it a 2D problem and it's deformable shell, all that. So let's created so i'm going to say maybe something 100 by 100 so we'll type 50 by 50 on the top end here and then 50 and minus 50 on the bottom end here so this gives us basically the steel plate that we have so what if we then put a circle in, in it so it's currently at center and maybe our circle can be maybe let's say something that is 15 and zero so a simple small circle like that and then we'll click done so that's our steel plate. Okay, so why not let's create a material? So it's going to be made from steel with a plasticity of 210 e to the power 9 and 0 0.33. And the yield stress for steel would be 250 e to the power 6 and 0, 0.0. All right, so that's our steel material. So what of our section sketch? So, so I'll call this steel section. All right, that's fine. And then we could then do a section assignment within the steel material that we've created here. So double click, okay. So this is what I want to use. And so that's my steel section. So I've made a steel. So what of meshing, okay. So this is 100 by 100. So I can leave this as 10. So this is fine. What element choice are we using? So let's use a quadrilateral element choice in the axis, okay. And then we mesh. Okay, so my closely meshed model, not, not ideal, but this is what, something that we're going to use you know, subsequently. So this is our model, um, and we've done the section assignment. So in the assembly, we create an instance of this model. This is fine. What of our step? So loading step. So we accept the loading step. And if I go back to this still, I could create a set. So let's say set all elements. So maybe this is what I want to do. And then I select everything there. So because I've got that all element, so what if I go back here? So what by history up all element history output? So if you want that. So I'm going to only track all the elements in the model. And let's say I'm going to track S11, E11, just to those values. So let's say this is what I'm interested in, in this model. Okay, so what are the bounding conditions? So a boundary condition will be, so let's say fixed X back. All right, so let me fix the X back using a displacement boundary condition. So I select there and I'll fix that in the one direction. Okay, so fixed Y base. So I'm selecting the base here and I'm fixing that in the two direction. And then let's say my load, my load here would be a loading step attach the body and then I select for the front okay so in the x direction I want a 10 you know unit displacement so we've got everything that we kind of need in this model and we could go ahead and create a job so if I create this job so simulation one for example 
is what we want to call this job and we can then try and submit to run. Okay, so the job is running and hopefully it will give us a result in the end. So what we've done here is basically we've created a simple job, we've submitted it to run, it's running and in the end here it says okay the job has been completed so we can stop that script. So now we stop the script, the question is can we actually visualize our script to see what it is about? Of course we can. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open the environment where the abacus so this is my working directory and what I want you to notice is that there are these two Python scripts, two variants. So one of them is a compiled Python file, but the one you really want is the first one here. So you're going to open it and we're going to see what it looks like. So if I right click on that and say edit, so you can see it looks definitely like a Python script. So it's generated a Python script for us. So we want to use this as a template for working. Okay, remember what I've done here is that I've edited it with uh, notepad plus plus i suggest that you use notepad plus plus for your editing because it gives the formatting you know it gives the color coding the syntax of python nicely so which is what we see here so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to save a copy as within that same location so let's say my still um, python script file okay so basically i'm changing it and because this is coming from my back because it always have this defined thing because it's preferring it for another kind of script. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to copy from here to the end. So if you copy all the way to the end, so just copy that, and then I'm going to delete this. Remember, I want a reusable Python script, so we can paste that in there. So this is fine now, so this indentation is not good. So what we're going to do, because I'm using, again, uh, Notepad, but you can select this space alone and delete it. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to take away this indentation. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you press down Alt first so that you can then select the column. So if we select there and then we can go all the way to the end of the code. Okay, so this is fine. And then you can now go somewhere to where. So basically we've selected all that spaces and we release it and then you could delete it. So what this will do is nicely now it will in the, remove the indentation which will make this code to run. So basically we have our Python script. So that's easy, it's that easy to have a Python script. Now specifically for this job, now what we can then do with this script is to kind of make changes with it and see what it will do for us when we start showing the model. So remember we're working with a 100 by 100. So what if I change this to let's say maybe 80. So if I put 80 here and then 80 there. So that means I'm working with a 160 by 160 because that's what the rectangle that creates the model is here. All right, so the next thing is this section of the script, which is where we create the, the circle. So can we make this circle a little bit bigger? So maybe we can make it maybe 25. So it's a 50 um, millimeter in diameter circle. So this is fine. Look how we, okay, the, first, the other thing is the seed part. So can we not change the seed part and make it a little bit finer? So it was 10, so can I make it like maybe four? something really small to allow a finer element mesh. So that's the seed part. So that means we're going to mesh it in a, a finer way. Um, and then you could go all the way maybe down. So let, let's say maybe instead of extracting the S11, so can we not extract X22? Okay, in our model, for whatever reason that you want in the end. You know, so this, this is probably what you want. So okay, maybe the displacement that we are looking for. So this is the displacement in the model. Can we not change the displacement and make it a little bit bigger? So let's do a 20 micron displacement um, on that domain. So we've made all the changes on this script. So um, so we could say, you know, save us. So, um, or we could just override the one we have there. Okay, so we've got a, a new script in our environment. Okay, so the other thing, if we go to the end of the code, maybe this job, let me call it simulation two. Okay, simulation two. So this is fine. The other thing I need, that I need you to note is that the system expects you to have model one uh, because it's the name of the model that you're looking for. So what we're going to do when we go back to Abacus is this current original model that is model one, let's rename that and maybe call it old model. Right. And then we can now create the former model one because our script is expects this file name to exist. So we start with that. So now it's an empty script. We are going to run our code on that and then see what happens. So we'll do file run script. 
Now this is the open the fight for your opponent. Okay, so that didn't work so because we missed out writing sim one. So although we changed the sim one here, the original file name should actually be sim here. So we change this to two. Um, and then so basically the model is complete so we can then now go ahead and run the code so if I delete this again and then okay so this is my model one so which is created so if I do file run script now open that so it will open so if you right away you could see that the mesh is a much finer mesh it has also created a sim model that we're looking for it's running as well and soon we should have a conclusion for us okay so that's what you can do with this so by simply making changes on a python script that you created using a macro in abacus you can actually get a model looking good so so if you look at the result for this it does show you some interesting case so this is really nice because what you see here is that the system is based on a python script that you generated straight away from abacus um, without knowing how to do this so that's really all i wanted to show in this video so if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to this channel. Again, if you're interested in Abacus tips and tricks, please look here and you'll see the videos that I've made on showing you how to work within Abacus, you know, some of the tricks. So thank you for your interest in this, in this video and catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.